Hey everyone, Cynix here. It's time for more Paint Over Pals, the series where I take Patreon submitted art and see if I can offer useful art advice by doing paint overs. As always, critiquing is the most valuable test of your art skills, so I recommend critiquing along at home. I give myself one hour for each paint over, and I don't always get the desired results, but hopefully it remains fun and educational regardless. On a side note, I had a lot more submissions this time, so I'll be doing half of them this episode and the other half in a couple weeks. Anyway, let's jump in there. First up, let's start with this portrait by Kyle Van Riper. The value range and colors seem mostly fine, but we are getting a bit too cloudy with a lot of the facial forms. Now, this isn't exactly a method I would normally do in my process, but I am going to try really simplifying the face into just a bunch of geometric planes. I know it's going to look really weird at first, but let's trust the process and see where it goes. I'm thinking about all of these planes in 3D space and just trying to make sure that the flat color I pick for each one follows that three-dimensional logic. Yellow light coming from below and slightly more red on the right side. Just kind of trying to match everything that was previously done. In reality, most of these planes will transition gradually, so I'll just start softening the edges between most of them. It still might look a bit funky, so I'll lower the opacity just a little to get some of that underlying painting just peeking through and giving us some free texture. Now I just need to add the same level of shape confidence to the hair, without spending too much time, and then I can go in and start rendering out the main focal points of any face, the eyes and mouth. The whites of the eyes were looking a bit too far off from the rest of the skin, so I added more subtle orange to them. And I might as well have the eyelashes catching some of that light from underneath. Although maybe they don't really do that much in reality, I don't actually know. Our brains aren't used to seeing faces lit from the bottom. The mouth is definitely an easy place to fix up though. The teeth need to be set farther back behind the lips and really sell that they have a bit more anatomy. I added some more graphic flourishes to the hair in the short time I had, and also liquefied the jaw to be a bit more in line with the skull. Overall, it definitely feels more confident with the planes and edges, so that's always a good place to leave things. Next, I have this anime painting by Lixie. It might be a bit unfinished, but I have to say it looks great. You have a much stronger skill for anime than I do, so I won't really mess around with that aspect of things. Luckily, you mentioned that you were wondering if I had any advice on soft gradations when rendering, and I certainly might have a handful of ideas, so let's try some different exercises. One exercise I love is doing an ambient occlusion map of your drawing. It's a bit tricky to do without just the line art, so sorry for struggling to get things to line up, but the basic idea is that you render the whole character as if they're being lit with an extremely even soft light. Only the smallest crevices where the light can't get into should appear in this stage. And you can really just use a big old airbrush to add some of the subtle form indication. I don't think I mentioned it enough, but it's really important that you use the size of your brush to get softer transitions. The bigger the brush, the softer the transition you can get. Back to those occlusion shadows, they should feel like little pockets, so avoid lines in favor of little wells of shadow. If you do it really nice, it should start to look like a 3D model, and then you can always just throw some base colors under it. Usually you wouldn't want this to be your only lighting situation though, because there is nothing dynamic going on. So I can actually just start over from the beginning and try a completely new paint over. Let's try some dynamic lighting. Something slightly diagonal should be fine for experimenting. You could also just have a standard spotlight above and focus on cast shadows, but whichever. A dynamic light source allows you to instantly sell an extra layer of dimension that implies this character is in 3D space. And if we include some of that ambient occlusion knowledge that we gained from earlier, we can take the depth a lot further. So there we go. Ran out of time from doing two different styles, but I'm not going to pretend I can out-anime you. So that's what I got. Hopefully it's useful. Let's move on to a different style. Here is an illustration by Skidoodly. I know this scene is a reference to something, but I can't remember what it is at the moment. I'm sorry. Regardless, I feel like the lines are doing far too much of the heavy lifting in this. 
One great way to test out your illustrations is to make sure you can still sell everything with just shapes of color and value. Then, even if you want to have lines, you'll notice they work a bit better. You know what show always did an amazing job at using shapes instead of lines? Samurai Jack. So I'm going to take some heavy inspiration from Samurai Jack and see if I can make that work. First off, let's try to make that background work without any lines. Some painterly gradation in the sky with some flat mountain shapes should be fine. As we come forward in space, everything needs to create more contrast. So I'm making the trees a lot darker and using more of them for vertical contrast. If we really want to steer the eye, we can have a bit more of a pathway on that ground plane. And I might have struggled a bit with this chicken, but I guess it'll have to do. Anyway, the main character felt far too bright for a nighttime scene, so I really just tried to darken up all of those shapes and just use rim lighting from the red glow to sell the forms. Now maybe it's because I was repainting the whole scene, but I fully ran out of time before I could go over everything. That's fine though, I need to remind myself sometimes that it doesn't need to be a finished artwork, just a useful paint over of things that could potentially be improved upon. So whether you use line work in the final piece or not, just always make sure it can stand up on its own without it. Back to faces, and yes, we have a lot of faces in these videos. This portrait is by Darren Boyo Wow. First off, for YouTube's sake, I have declared the thing in his mouth to be a lollipop, for kid style. Anyway, the piece looks great, nice colors and lighting. The only thing it can use is a bit more of a control over the focus. The brushwork everywhere feels a bit too chaotically even. You can certainly have that in some places, but you'll probably want the eyes to have a slightly more rendered look. I've decided to fix this in a fun way, which is to just blur everything out entirely and then just pull some edges back into focus. This way we still get to have the benefit of the work you did and we can just focus on controlling our visual attention. I brought some light in on the right side of the background to make things a little less harsh, but mostly I'm just going to be picking out strong edges around the eyes and rendering them into focus. Once again, ambient occlusion is key for good painting, so that triangle between the jaw and neck can do a lot of visual work in an otherwise loose area. So it's all just edges and crevices from here. I did bring in just a bit more warmth on the shadow side of the face, if we're going to have a warm background, you might as well have some warm shadows from all that ambient light. For the hair and the clothes, I mostly just soften the attention they have. And now, when you see the portrait, it should feel much more engaging with the facial features. That's what we like in a painting, the mental tricking of the viewer's brain to focus on the place the artist wants them to. Alright, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that one. Up next, we have another painting by Jennifer Aaron. Jennifer is already quite good at rendering, so let's see what I can suggest this time. Now, I love the general rendering technique on display here. A lot of good control over edges and hues and everything. You did leave that hand suspiciously less rendered from the rest, though. But if that's what you're here for, don't worry, I'll do my best to fix it up. First, some random suggestions. There's room for the anatomy to be just a little bit more exaggerated in the forms. Both arms are feeling a little bit on the safe side, so I'm going to add a bit more contrast and form around that elbow joint first. Also, there's a vein in the arm that seems to be perfectly traveling along the shadow line, so I'm just going to shift that a bit. The other arm is going to be a bit more of an experiment. In theory, the bicep should have a much stronger sense of a muscle body. Instead of just being a cylinder, you can exaggerate the core of the muscle being wider before it tapers down into the tendons and connective points. I definitely didn't do a perfect job at demonstrating this from imagination, but if you want to keep taking things up a level, using reference for the anatomy can make a huge difference. I wish I was using reference because speaking of the benefit of reference, that hand was missing a lot of anatomical info. I'll do my best to tackle it from imagination, but this is tricky. I definitely want to ramp up the amount of folds going on in the palm. Pinching something between your thumb and fingers really squeezes the palm inward, so folds increases galore. I spent a little chunk of time on it, but I think that's about the best I can do with it. I do want to mess with that ear a bit though, I'm a stickler for ears, and this one felt like it was getting a little too far away from the jaw. 
Lastly, if you really want to make all of that anatomy sing, a bit of rim light can do wonders, especially on the arm and hand we just fixed up. Plus, with the way the hair is, the rim light is just going to be so much fun. All right, I'm still not 100% on that bicep, but I'm pretty happy with those changes overall. Hey look, here's something without any faces in it. This painting is by Tressy. We've got some fun colors and interesting ideas, but the composition is still a bit of an issue. Tressy, you always have so many giant windows of light in all of your paintings. Unfortunately, the horizon feels kind of in the center, and that dividing vertical shape in the background also feels far too centered. This is going to be a bit tricky, because I don't honestly have a great idea of how to fix the composition without just making new thumbnails altogether. I shall try though, so there is already a strong sense of blown out light in the background and more of a dark dynamic range, so I'm really going to try to keep playing with that lighting. I think there is supposed to be some sort of underground cave system or something in that blue area, so I think that's what I'll go with. I can tell you I already feel a lot better just getting rid of that center vertical structure, but I am worried that I'm changing things too much, so maybe I'll try to bring it back eventually. Anyway, the most important thing about an environment is the sense of depth. So making sure the contrast keeps lowering a bunch as you go back in space is very important. So I'm just going to keep softening the background and making it lighter while also squeezing the horizon downward a bit. Compositionally, I haven't really balanced out the canvas though, but I honestly just don't have any great ideas. I did have a lot of fun playing with the overgrown moss and purple background plants though. Other than that, it felt weird to have so many light sources in the overgrowth area, so I took out a lot of those red lights and just let the cave kind of be a natural blue glow. I did lots of rendering over the course of the hour, but never really resolved that compositional issue as much as I would have liked. Giving up on that, I just brought back in some more verticality and experimented with adding figures into the piece for a secondary focal point but the scale didn't really make any sense. So, oh well, you know what? I did have fun rendering things and noodling around. I did make it a bit overly dense with information though, but uh, let's just move on to our last piece for today. The final image is from Biscuit. I don't know if it's an OC or if it's from something, but it's certainly a portrait with some anime influences. Right away, you have some shiny effects on the hand and the skin and the eyes and everything, so I want to make sure those are contrasted by a less shiny skin tone. The skin was feeling very high key and a bit too sharp in its contrasts, so let's just blast it all back by covering it up with a slightly more middle tone airbrush. Now I can just come back in over the skin and bring out the forms yet again, but this time I'll be using a much shallower contrast range. Little hints of anatomy are fine around the shoulder and neck, but I don't want to draw too much focus on them. I do, however, want to make sure that the cast shadows from the hair and facial features look nice and confident. I don't think I really need to mess with any of the features or anatomy, so I'm just going to focus on controlling skin tones and adding subtle forms with strong light and shadow. Of course, because I airbrush things, I do need to pop back in all of those ambient occlusion crevices in the nose, eyes, and corners of the mouth. The hand could also use just a little bit of extra form around the knuckles and tendons, but I won't spend too much time there. So back on the face, I know that the eyes were very glowy before, but since we're already seeing them in light instead of in shadow, it just doesn't work well to make them super glowy. Now if the face was in shadow, then the glow would be a great touch, but it felt like a bit too much light on light as it was. I tried to spend a bit of time resimplifying some of those hair chunks here and there, but there's a lot of wildness going on in there and I didn't want to get too carried away spending my time there. I did add a bit more contrast to some of those metal parts just to make them pop, but I was pretty much done at this point. So why does it feel so weird? Oh wait, I completely forgot to add the eyebrows back in, so that should help out a lot. I don't know why they're blue, but hey, when in anime, do as the animus do. All right, that should wrap things up. I think that skin rendering works out well enough. So you've reached the end yet again. Hopefully you won't be waiting too long for the next episode with the other half of the submissions. I would like to thank all of the artists who submitted art for this episode. 
And of course, a thank you to you for watching. And more and more and more extra thank yous to the rest of my Patreon supporters as well. All right, stay observant, everyone. See ya.